I'm Scott Wunderlich from the Great River Arts Visual Arts Committee. I'm here today with Rich Lozier, who has an exhibition of incredible paintings filling the galleries here at Great River Arts. We hope you can stop in and see this exhibition up during the month of April. Well, Rich, you have an incredible gallery full of paintings at Great River Arts. Uh, you have a career retrospective going on through the month of April. Sure, right. Let's talk about your interest in art. Where are you originally from, Rich? I'm originally from Harvard, Massachusetts. It's a uh, central Massachusetts, all apple country. My people were apple farmers, basically. So we spent a lot of time there. And uh, I had a normal upbringing. Wasn't really interested in art until later on. When did you become interested in the arts? When I was about uh, 28 years old, I answered this uh, ad in a magazine, can you draw this pirate? And that was the start of the famous artist school. It was a three-year correspondence school out of Westport, Connecticut. And uh, it was a very interesting set of books that they would give you. And uh, I worked three years at that. And then I had, was working with the power company at the time and they went on a very lengthy strike, and there was a lot of ill feelings with the company. So I applied for a grant, and I quit my job, and I went to the New England School of Art and Design in Boston on Newbury Street. So I spent uh, another three years there, and then I took private lessons from Isabelle Lafreniere from Rockport, Mass. Now, Rockport's a hotbed for artists. It's a beautiful little spot right on the East Coast. So after a year with Isabel, she encouraged me to go out in nature and paint what I saw, get right out there in the thick of everything. So I bought a little RV and I started with Brockport and I went up the coast of New Hampshire into Portsmouth. That's where those tugboats are from, Portsmouth. Uh, still has cobblestone streets there, very, very uh, colonial area. And then I went up through Maine and hit all these little, in, little grooves that where the lobstermen would come out of, because Maine is just such a rugged little area with all, all kinds of harbors and that. So I spent some time there. Then I cut across to the White Mountains, which is part of the uh, Appalachians. And I stayed there until October. And then it started to get cold. So I got an invite from my sister to go to Naples, Florida, Florida of all places another very wealthy community. So I stayed there for a couple of years and sold my paintings on the sidewalks. I did mostly sidewalk art. Well, let me ask you a couple of things, Rich. The paintings, you've got paintings of fishing trawlers here in the gallery. Mm -hmm. Where are they from? Those are from the East Coast. The uh, Northeast? Yes, the Northeast, yeah, up through. The little boats were Maine. The bigger ones were California. But I started out in, in the East Coast doing those. When you were w traveling around in the Northeast and then mm -hmm. down to Florida, were you working as an artist at that time? What I would do is I'd pick up uh, part-time jobs. For example, when I get to Florida, my sister set me up uh, painting uh, on houses. I was always a, a painter of sorts, so I was always in paint. Yeah, so I worked there two years, and uh, I'd sell my side shows on Sundays. Saturdays and Sundays, I'd worked with that, and then I had a regular job painting. So I noticed in the, in the exhibition, you've got some flamingos, other water birds. Is that from your time in Florida? Yeah, that was in okay. Florida. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I had a chance to go in the Caribbean. So I went from Naples and I went down through the Caribbean and I uh, stayed in a place called Totola. It was British. Now, the, Brit the Brits are really strict. They only give you a six months visa. And it's within 24 hours of that visa ending, they called me. And they said, it's time for you to leave now. <laughs> so I had to go back up through Florida. And then from Florida, I bid my sister goodbye and I headed to California. Now I stopped in New Orleans for a while in French quarters and tried to get some more information out of the sidewalk artists there. Now, Rich, I noticed that there were some jazz players in a couple of your paintings. Are those from New Orleans? Yeah, Preservation Hall. Okay. Really interesting place. Then after New Orleans, I headed to Arizona. I went up through Flagstaff, 
up through the, the mountains. Mm -hmm. And I cut across and I stayed in um, Las Vegas for about a month with my uncle. He was there. I didn't like Vegas at all. It was just too plasticky for me. So then I headed into the Sequoias, uh, Sierra Mountains, the Sequoia National Park, Kings Canyon, Yosemite's, beautiful. I stayed there for about a month. It was just, just beautiful. Well, after that, I cut across to Monterey, Carmel, John Steinbeck's area, mm -hmm. you know, Cannery Row and the Fisherman's Wharf. That was a lot of work there, too, for an artist. And were you still doing uh, art shows and painting as you went? Yeah, except for naturally into the, the mountains. In the Sierras, I just collected all my drawings and stuff. Um, I didn't always, you know, have a chance to set it up. So I collected all this and then uh, Monterey, I had one show there in the sidewalk. I would go to all these resort areas and find, then from Monterey though, I hit it really good. I went to Santa Barbara. That is a nice community. Santa Barbara, there was a mile of nothing but sidewalk art. And I stayed there for about a year okay. until my brother talked me into going to San Diego. So we went down to San Diego. I stayed, I worked with my brother, by the way, and he was a, a painter himself. A uh, so, house painter? Or? Yeah, house painter. Okay. We always were in the painting business. My grandfather taught us how to paint. Mm -hmm. So anyways, um, we stayed in there for about eight years in San Diego. And there's a lot of work there for sidewalk shows and that. I noticed a lot of sailboat paintings. Yep, that's, that was San Diego. Those are San Diego Harbor? Yeah, San Diego. Just and, thousands and thousands of boats there. And you've got a number of pieces in the exhibition from the America's Cup, San Diego, 1992. Were you commissioned to do work for the America's Cup? No, but here's the way it worked. They ran a, the uh, America's Cup committee ran a uh, contest because they wanted a poster to represent it. So this, the poster I have here is a prototype and uh, they didn't take it, they took a, a photograph. But I asked them if I could uh, you know, do my own work, posters. And they said, yes, as long as I didn't use America's Cup. But first, let me tell you this. Before the America's Cup, a friend of mine had a timeshare in Maui. So I told my brother, I says, I'm going to take a little leave of absence here. I'm going to Maui for two weeks. Well, I stayed there for seven months. Maui's just fascinating. I just loved it. Again, you have a lot of paintings from Hawaii, and I assume that's from the trip to Maui? Yeah, from Maui. I sold a lot of those paintings. And uh, this is what I've got left, what's here. Um, I was doing really good there, and then I had a gallery down in Lahaina that, uh, it was like an off-Broadway gallery, by the way. It was behind the main drag. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, the gallery owner stole 23 of my paintings. You're kidding. I went to the gallery one morning, and it was totally empty, and he had fleeced a couple other artists that were in there, too. Never found out where, where he went or anything about it. So I got discouraged and uh, I said, I'm going back to San Diego. You've got a number of waterfall paintings. Uh, did you have some favorite places in Hawaii that you liked to go? There were so many of them. Uh, the one I started out with was the Road to Hana, they called it. In 1933, all the bridges were built in 1933. And anyways, in through there, you could, you could catch all your waterfalls and there was there's so much flowers, birds. There was so much to paint. It was just, I had a lot of fun there. I got it lucky. I went back to San Diego just in time for the America's Cup. So that's when I started to hustle. You had to really hustle now because we're doing illustrations, commercial. I'd go to all the different countries and see if I could do the same thing that I did with the American flag. So I was picking up some work there. But the American flag was the most popular one. So you would go to other countries, their team, yeah. and do, offer to paint with their flag and yep. their, their yep. boat. They're all in San Diego area. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'd go through all of them. And uh, anyways, I started to do the little ones too. That sold very well, the little ones. Now I was in three galleries in La Jolla, which is pretty hard to do, but I, uh, my friend hit the lottery and he opened the gallery. And that's the picture you see of my wife and I in 1991, the gallery opening. So I got a chance to show all the America's Cup. As long as I didn't use the word America's Cup, I could do it. So that was very successful. Then I ran into Harvey Hutter. He worked for New Yorker magazine and he commissioned me to do San Diego View of the World in that 
style. So I did that. And in the meantime, I had met my wife. And then she, uh, we got married and we came back to Little Falls and we bought the old farmhouse and I built a studio there. And I've been in Little Falls now for 29 years. Well, Rich, I noticed with all of your travels on our walls right now, yeah. we go to Hawaii, we go to the Northeast, the Southeast, all over the world, and then we wind up in rural Morrison County. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Several of the paintings <laughs> look awfully local to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I loved over my peers. I was fascinated with the bales of hay that you'd see, uh, the hard work, you know? There's another one, uh, Pop Farm, Doug Pop, it's a friend of mine. He's over by Bolus, and he's got this beautiful brook that runs through the, all this property, and I'm out there painting, setting up painting, and I look around, and there's about 50 cows <laughs> sticking their nose in, trying to figure out what I was doing, you know? And I got a little nervous with all those cows around me. But um, yeah, I love the piers, I think that's material. So the people from Morrison County will see at least some areas that they know in your paintings. Yes, they will. And yeah. a lot of trips to Hawaii and, yeah. and all over the world. Yeah. And you've been here now 30 years. Yeah, almost 30. Uh, doing some house painting and commercial painting. Yep. But also continuing to add more paintings sure. all the time. Right. Do you have advice for young artists? I would advise them to go into graphic design and be an illustrator. It's a tough road to hoe. You've got to, have, you've got to be a kind of gypsy if you want to be in the fine art business. It's a little different. Of course, I traveled, which I had fun with it, but most artists don't want to travel. They don't get the reputation. They don't build it up, you know? But um, yeah, I would say go into graphic design and make good money as far as the arts go. So a know? good day job and then you can yep. pursue your passions in, in the evening and weekends. Right, that's what I did, yeah. Because I was on the road for 15 years and I lived out of that van and, and that uh, little RV and sometimes they got a little tight. <laughs> you, you sound like you have very fond memories of your time on the road. Oh, I did. Yeah, it was so much fun. I learned so much. What were the highlights of being on well, the road for that long? Well, of course, Maui was really a lot of fun. In Santa Barbara, California, it was fun. I'll tell you a cute story. I just set up at Santa, at, in Santa Barbara, and I'm fiddling around with my uh, easel, and this gentleman comes up with glasses and a hat on, and I, I wasn't paying attention. You know, He says, hey, I, I'll, I'll buy that painting. I said, okay. He reaches in his pocket, gives me the cask, takes, takes off and drives away. And the artist next door to me came over, he says, hey, nice sale. Do you know who that guy was? I says, no, I didn't pay any attention. So that was Robert Mitchum. Oh, I was mad because I wanted to carry on a conversation with one of my favorite movie stars. And you have uh, art in collections from a lot of sports stars, movie stars, yeah. millionaires and billionaires. Yeah, yeah. And you know, a lot of it was just from the sidewalks. Um, Mrs. Croc that owned McDonald's at the time. Wife of Ray Croc. Right, yeah, Ray Croc. She sent, she drove up in their limousine, sent her secretary out to buy the painting. <laughs> so I never really, she introduced herself, her name was Nancy. And anyway, she said she represented Mrs. Croc and she liked that painting. So I sold her, but uh, I had an idea for Ronald McDonald House. Uh, years ago, that was quite popular. So I had wristbands drawn into all these baseball players. So I got to go, Steve Garvey bought one of them. Uh, and some of the other players from uh, the Padres. But then one of my friends said, uh, I want you to do a painting for me. He commissioned me to do a painting for Norm Nixon. Now, Norm Nixon played with the Lakers, right. basketball. Mm -hmm. And his wife was Debbie Allen. Now, Debbie Allen just came back with Grey's Anatomy. But she was in the Bill Cosby show. Right. Yeah. So we went up to their house. It was just beautiful, you know, he, um, they treated me like the king for that sake. They really liked the painting. Oh, so cool. afterwards, we went to Roxy's for a party. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, who's there but uh, Norm Nixon's best friend, Jack Nicholson, the movie star. I was so impressed with that man. He was very polite, and he was an excellent listener. He picked up on everything everybody said. It was just so much fun. And he was going with Angelica Houston at the time. John Huston's daughter, the famous director. And, uh, you know, I had the opportunity to meet all these people. It was a lot of fun. Uh, 
Joanne Woodward. Right, and wife of Paul Newman. Yeah. And they had uh, one of your paintings? She came over, I was in, uh, uh, Bill Oakes was our instructor. He was an illustrator for the Navy, that's how he, and then he became a teacher. Now he used to send us out in the common, which was like 100 steps from the, the art, from school. So we'd go out in the common and do people quick. His, his theory was the quick one, because he also was a courtroom artist. So we had to do these quick sketches. So we'd go out there for 20 minutes and then we'd go back in. So I'm out there sketching and the lady behind me says, oh, that's, that's really nice. And uh, I looked over and it was Joanne Woodward. She had a, a coat over her shoulders. They were doing a scene and she had a break. And famous artist, Westport, Connecticut, she lives there. So I struck up a conversation with her, told her who I was. And I said, the school's right over there. Well, the next day, we, uh, the students had their own gallery at the, at the school. Next day, my, some of my classmates said, hey, Joan Woodward was here. She bought one of your paintings. <laughs> 400 bucks I think I made. <laughs> How did you feel having someone that famous buy, buy one of your paintings? Because at that time, she was one of the biggest oh, yeah. stars in the world. Oh, yeah. But um, to be perfectly honest with you, I never got starstruck on these people. I've met so many people. Um, a lot of baseball players. I mean, a lot of those people. Um, I just, uh, I just wasn't. Uh, I could have got Tiger Woods' autograph very easily, and a lot of these other people. But I, oh, I'll tell you another story. that's cute. I'm flying. Where the hell we flying? First class, anyway, someplace. And who's beside me in the aisle? But a very drunk Glenn Campbell, and Tanya Tucker, and his brother Richard. Okay. <laughs> So he reads so he says, you want my autograph? <laughs> I said, sure. So he signed the thing, but they were having so much fun. But I always got a chance to meet a lot of people like that. It was, that's the fun part about traveling. Are you still painting now? Yep, still painting. But um, I'm not uh, as active as I used to be. Mm -hmm. And then, the, you know, the gallery system has changed a lot. In the 70s, what I would do is I'd have a little portfolio with a handle and a zipper on it. And I'd walk into these galleries and I'd zip that thing open and, and show them eight by tens and I keep turning. So they, you know, I, I couldn't in, really interrupt them, but if I catch their eye, I'd make a deal with them, you know? So I did that a lot. But nowadays you can't do that, it's just different. Nobody's social anymore. Everything's the cell phone. Got to submit smart. it all electronically. Yep, yeah. What kind of work are you doing? Where are you painting? Where, where would we find you with your easel? Well, you go by my house every day, I right do. there in the studio. Yeah, I built a uh, 67 by 26 uh, building, and uh, half of it's my studio. Now I'm storing everything up. I'm running out of space. I got so many paintings stored up now. I had over 100, but I couldn't frame them all. <laughs> well, we've got quite a few of them here in the yeah, gallery yeah. right now. Yeah, there's 62 of them here. It's a, it's a full gallery and it looks great. Yeah, I'm very impressed with it myself, to tell you the truth. I've never had them out away from the studio, you know, open like this. So are you getting out, a lot of your paintings, you were out on scene with an easel painting in right. front of your subject matter. Yep. Sounds like now you're doing more in the studio. Well, as I showed you earlier, the sketchbooks, I've, I brought them out. I got about five sketchbooks filled with stuff with all the color notes and everything mm -hmm. I showed you. And I bring them out sometimes and go over that. And take, take sketches you've drawn, make a painting up from the sketch. Yep, yep. And sometimes somebody will call me and they say, uh, can I get one of those Maui paintings? Will you do one of these, you know? So I'll do something like that. Or hopefully Piers. <laughs> Piers is very popular. Yeah, it is, it is. There's a spot there where you can see seven uh, the different farms at a distance. Pretty neat. I've had a good life with the art, even though I started late. Right. Yeah, I started very late, so. So what do you think? Should we have a 90th birthday exhibition here at Great River Arts? Mm, I don't think I, you know, like uh, Renoir, they used to have to uh, strap the brushes to his hands as he had arthritis so bad, but he lived to be in his 90s. Why not you? Yeah, Picasso would be the man to be though. He was the most successful painter in the world as far as financial goes. Sure. Yeah, he made tons of dough. <laughs> but it's been fun. It's been a good life. Wonderful. 
Yeah. Well, thank you for ex exhibiting here at Great River Arts. Well, it's thanks a wonderful for having show. me. I and really I appreciate that, it. I hope everyone comes in before the show goes down. Yeah, I hope they do. I hope they enjoy a lot of bright colors. There are. Yeah. <laughs>